This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. Yeah! These are the words. BYU Sports Nation is live! Happy New Year's Eve, everyone. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B. Can't see a thing through these. Yep, we're just going to set these right here. We will raise a glass to what a fantastic yes. year of BYU athletics Bing. that all of us just experienced. Wherever yeah. and however you are connected, great to have you with us. As always, we are brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside sparkling cider taste tester, Jerem Jordan. No one looks cool in these hats. <laughs> you can be the best-looking person of all time. No one looks cool. Nobody looks cool in those glasses either. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but that's not the point, right? Uh, what a year 2021 was. Um, we're going to have some fun in the next hour celebrating it. Like, I don't think it was the greatest year in BYU sports ever, but it was really close. Okay? I think 81 is the best year ever. Let me make the quick argument why. You have uh, an amazing football season from Jim McMahon's senior year. Mm-hmm. right? You have uh, Notre Dame, uh, the win from Danny Ainge, the lamp. Men's golf wins the natty. Okay, yep. Those three, pretty awesome. This year, pretty, pretty good. Maybe better. I could see where you could see that, right, with the Big 12 invite yeah. and everything. So, pretty good. Today's show lineup, all about the top BYU sports moments of 2021. What does take number one overall in a year of unforgettable and unprecedented accomplishments, not to mention that invitation to the Power 5 ball? Mm-hmm. All rise and shout. It's time for the top five moments of 2021. And we will start at number five and count our way down. Jerem, bring on BYU women's soccer, defeating Santa Clara 3-2 in penalty kicks and advancing to the NCAA National Championship. Not only did they reach their first ever Final Four in College Cup, they won a game there against the defending national champs in PKs to get to the national title. That was such a fun run, and uh, you and I helped call the majority of those games, of course. And this team was really, really, uh, you know, disappointed in how last season ended. And they actually, um, you know, watched Santa Clara going with the national championship, and they were like, "No, we need to be able to make a run like that. If they can do it, why can't we?" So then they meet up. And then they, uh, you know, go to the national championship game. Certainly you want to win the national championship. It's PKs. PK, there's some skill to PKs, but there's also a certain amount of luck. Whatever. BYU won the semi, got to the title game. It was gravy at that point, in my opinion. It was such a fun run. An amazing, amazing group that BYU had highlighted by its best player in program history, Michaela Coulihan. Incredible. Who finishes... Um, you know, the season as, as one of the best in the country, 18 goals, 51 points, top tour soccer, national player of the year. Cameron Tucker has 16 goals. She's amazing. By the way, that's 16 goals and missing a couple of games. She had a knee injury early. The team was so fun to watch, man. And they responded from that disappointing finish in the spring so well. And it was a magical ride to be along with them. We'll talk about the entirety of the vengeance tour that BYU women's <laughs> soccer went on in just a moment. But the capstone of said yeah. vengeance tour was certainly beating your longtime rival and the defending college cup champion, Santa Clara Broncos. Michaela Coulihan spoke about what that meant. It was just super exciting. And I'm glad that we pulled out the win because obviously that's, that's everything we've worked for. And we owed it. We owed it to Santa Clara a little bit. <laughs> BYU beat Santa Clara in a non-conference game in a weird COVID-altered spring season. Yeah, lost the conference game at home, but won the non-conference game on the road. And then went back there in a real conference context and lost, Yep. but then got their revenge in the College Cup on the Broncos' home field. And, and in the history of BYU women's soccer in the early days, uh, you know, only 95 to now, right? There were several NCAA tournaments where BYU got matched up with one of the best teams in the country, Santa Clara. They used, they're really good now. They used to be at this level as well a while ago. Um, and BYU would go there and they'd lose. So to win that oh, with that context was really special too. And it was fun to watch this team run the gamut. Um, you know, all the way, won five games in the NCAA tournament. Like, this is what we're hoping from BYU men and women's basketball, that in a 64-team tournament, 68 in the men's side, 68 this year with the women as well, that they make a run like this. And, oh, by the way, don't forget, 
BYU women's soccer, the number one scoring offense in the country. Incredible. Every game. You and I called multiple games where they score seven. And it's like, <laughs> what in the world? It's crazy. They open up the tournament run with a 6 nil win over New Mexico. And yes, that New Mexico squad, while they had different coaches, lingering feelings of that scenario where BYU women's soccer players had their hair pulled. It was yeah. weird. So BYU opening up the tournament against New Mexico. Then they wanted Bama, took care of Bama. And they had to make up for losing to Virginia in the spring. And they took care of the number one seed Virginia in Charlottesville, only to come home to a game you called, Jerem, and face South Carolina, a team that ended their dreams five years previously. Yeah, it was an incredible run. And part of this this tournament run brings us to number four, which is not a moment or a game per se, but a whole day. Saturday, November 20th is the number four moment in 2021. Let's walk through what happened on that day. <laughs> it was incredible. In the morning, Whitney Orton becomes the first woman to win the cross-country individual national championship in BYU history. Right after that, Connor Mance wins the national championship. He goes back to back. He defends. It's the first school to have the individual champs from the same school since 1988. Women's soccer beats top seed Virginia 1-0, avenging last year's tournament loss. Men's yes. soccer beats Texas 3-1 to one to win the national championship. Six wins in three days, by the way. Women's volleyball clinched the WCC title with the San Diego loss. They beat St. Mary's just for good measure. Men's hoops beat Central Methodist. Football beat Georgia Southern. Women's basketball beat Boise State by 44. This was a great day. An unforgettable day, and it set up really in our minds at that point this was the impetus of no loss november yes we were like after that you figured that out you were the first one to bring that has up has byu lost in the month of november yet <laughs> no no they have not and then it got really exciting because we had to watch what they did the following week byu football had to win at usc byu men's basketball had to win at utah women's soccer had to win the elite eight against south carolina Ding, ding, ding. Taking care of business. BYU wraps up a no-loss November Mm. with November 20th, one of the greatest single days in the history of BYU sports. So I I call the – because, you know, Greg's in Georgia. Shep is in Virginia calling soccer. So I'm calling men's basketball on the radio. And off the top of the broadcast, I said, consider me distracted. BYU's 15 seconds away in women's soccer from beating top seed Virginia. I'm just sitting there watching it, describing it. It was such a big, exciting moment. That was so great. Like, November was unbelievable. Was December the same as November? No, it hasn't been and wasn't. But there have been some nice wins still. But, oh, man, November was special. And November 20th, extra special. April 29th was also special for One young man in particular at number three. We go all the way back to the end of April and the number two pick overall in the NFL draft by the Jets, 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 Zach Wilson, highest BYU football player ever drafted at number two, signs a thirty five point one million dollar contract over four years essentially twenty three million of that guaranteed without having taken an official snap. He's won the NFL's Pepsi Rookie of the Week multiple times this year, Jerem. That was a magical run that started in the 2020 football season through the COVID madness, and Zach Wilson just ran with that momentum right into the NFL. It was amazing to watch that, and and we you know linked up with Zach every week before the draft and then after the draft a little bit, sort of walked through that process. So it was amazing to watch him go number two, like, there was no way he was going one. Trevor Lawrence has been the first pick for like three years, right? So this is the highest he could possibly go realistically. And he goes number two. The only problem with it was that it was the Jets, and the Jets suck and probably will for a long time. But I hope that Zach can be good in spite of that. I was hoping in hindsight that he would just mail it in a little bit so he could go to a better team like oh, Mac Jones with the Patriots situation or whatever. Or even three to the Niners, honestly. I don't like the Niners as a Seahawks fan, but anyway – Zach uh, has, has shown the flashes of brilliance that Steve Young told us he needs to have in year one. He needs to continue his progression. He shows these moments where it's like, yeah, that's the dude that can be really, really good. Um, but he probably has the heart of a marathoner because he's running so much uh, in the pocket. It is, it is tough to watch sometimes. But he's trying to make the best of that situation. He got paid a ton. So happy for Zach to sure. go over too. Yeah. And Robert Sala, his head coach in New York, 
uh, just doubled down and said the arrow is pointing in the right direction and it is up for Zach Wilson right now. He's starting to look more comfortable even amidst the chaos in New York. And that's a big deal. And that's something that popped on the tape was Zach's playmaking ability when the pocket breaks down. And one of the more enjoyable things that we got to do was not just talk to Zach every week leading up to the draft, but talk to these high-level national analysts like ESPN's Todd McShay, who said that the tape, is it still tape or is it a digital recording, on Zach Wilson does not lie. It's hard to get done with his film assessment and to look at him and say, he, this is not a first-round quarterback and, and someone that doesn't belong somewhere at least in the top ten. And he was. I wish he had fallen. Uh, <laughs> I'm just anti-Jets. I really am. But Zach had such a magical 2020 and completely deserved that pick. Absolutely. Like, you, you've watched this NFL season. Everybody struggled but Mac. And Mac is the greatest coach of all time, right? And Bel- Belichick. Uh, Belichick. So Trevor Lawrence for the Jaguars. That's been a dumpster fire. Chicago's not been great for Justin Fields. That's been tough. Trey Lance doesn't even play every week. You know, he's he's a backup sometimes. Depends if Garoppolo's hurt or not. So yes, he was going to get thrown in the fire on a bad team. And hopefully in the next couple of years, we're talking about nope, the Jets are back to a wild cardish uh, team. Are they ever going to be like a team that goes to the Super Bowl? I don't see it. But hopefully uh, Zach continues to excel and grow and, and do his best. And hopefully the Jets are decent. You know what's wild? There was conversation about Zach Wilson being in a quarterback competition going into fall camp of the 2020 BYU football season. So you think about that, a competition within the BYU quarterback room in August and the following April, not even one year later, nine months later, he is the number two overall pick. All of that transpired in nine months. Mark Wilson had this as well. Amazing. Splitting with McMahon becomes a first-round pick the next year. Zach joined us to talk about just how surreal all of that nine months and the experience of being drafted number two overall was. Well, I think it's so, you know, just surreal. I I, I always kind of have those moments where I'm walking around throughout my day and I'm just like, geez, like this is, this is crazy, you know, to be in this (laughs) position and, and everything that's going on in my life. And, you know, I feel like nothing's really changed, but then like, I almost have to think back to like my kid self and how I used to look at somebody in this position and like, you know, how much bigger it is than I, than how I look at it, you know? So it's, it's truly just so awesome. And then getting picked, um, was emotional. You obviously, uh, you know, hugging both of my parents and kind of just, you know, like we, we made it, we did it, you know, kind of thing. And, and understanding that it's just the next step. This is just one more step to get, you know, to truly what I, what I've always dreamed of doing. You know, and it's it's uh, it's really awesome. Incredible stuff. The pro day throws, all of the viral moments, the headband. I mean, just so much <laughs> fun stuff surrounding that whole scenario. Okay, coming up, Blaine Fowler discusses the top five and the year in Cougar Sports. But next, we reveal our top two moments. What's number one for you? This is BYU Sports Nation. Hmm. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. 
I'm fully supportive of your father's decision. This family needs time out. We set peace and quiet. You don't get quieter than this. Oh, you mean it's haunted? I shall become their living nightmare. Beyond Ghostbusters. I have a plan. It's nice to meet you. I am cussed. This place is starting to feel like home. How do you plead? For mercy. For love is always with you. And love is stronger than death. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store. Official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Tegan Graham for three. That's going to happen a lot as the women's basketball team plays Portland tomorrow for Eastern time on BYU TV and the app. This team's so fun to watch. She wears number 10. She made 10 three-pointers in the game. Not bad. We are live at Studio B with your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. This is the Top 5 Moments Special of 2021 on BYUSN. Yes. I, I Every feel time like... I say it, I think I need to take a drink of this Martinelli's sparkling cider. I think this is, um, you know, Doctor Strange refilling Thor, except it's, you know, honor code abiding sparkling okay. cider. Yeah. Naturally. Mm-hmm. This is Brigham Young University. Yeah. We are down to our final two moments of 2021. And at number two, something that took essentially a decade of building up to BYU beats Utah in football. Let it rain over you with all of that calming, wonderful sensation. In fact, I've got a little montage for you to enjoy right now. Chaz, are you on the INT? The electricity and the intensity of that night inside Lavelle Edwards Stadium was palpable and almost tangible. You could almost touch the energy level that was just flying through that place on the heels of, you know, an unforgettable Friday as well. Jerem, that was just an unbelievable night for BYU football and BYU athletics overall. It started with the flyover on 9-11 that was super emotional. I'm calling the soccer game. We scares the crap out of everybody. It was so loud. Everyone stuck down. I was like, what's going on? Very emotional to have 9-11. A different kind of emotion, obviously, um, to play a football game. And BYU had lost nine in a row. It had been, you know, 12 years since BYU had won the game against Utah. And it happened. 26-17. It was awesome, man. Uh, Jaron Hall had a really nice game. Three touchdown passes. His rushing, though, I think won the game for BYU. 92 yards. That was the most we saw all year of Jaron Hall's legs. Then he kind of gets hurt in the next week with the ribs. But in this game, Tyler Algier rushed for 97. BYU won the turnover battle, plus two. That had been a huge storyline, as we talked about every stinking year. Utah being plus two and BYU having to climb that hill. Nope. BYU ended the streak, and it was awesome. It was part of the best weekend probably ever in BYU history. It was amazing. <laughs> that pretty much sums it up, right? Great. How was your weekend? Uh, it was probably the best weekend I of thought my sporting fan life. With the Big 12 invite on Friday, I thought the second coming was going to happen on Sunday. <laughs> I really did. I was kind of disappointed we got to Monday. But, no, it was amazing. After the game, I had a chance to speak with Uriah Leatawa. <laughs> and Lopa, well, he did not disappoint. Listen to this. What are your emotions as one of the defensive leaders of this team? Bro, it feels so good right now, dog. I just want to cuss. It feels so good. It just feels so great, bro. This feels amazing right now. <laughs> <laughs> he was heard to say, darn. Yes. Dag Nabbit. Fetch. This was amazing. Heck. Yeah. Uh, I love Lopa's genuine nature in that moment <laughs> because it just, the emotions were bubbling over for sure did you say bubbling yeah oh, oh that's, the word, that's the word of the day i'll have mm. another drink okay yeah so uriah wasn't done in that interview <laughs> no, no he wasn't in fact that that was really funny right that, that wasn't even the best thing that he said yeah when i asked him how he celebrates a win like that over utah where's the after party for you tonight i'm gonna go to bed so i can go to church i'm going to church God, you know, praise God. Congratulations, my friend. 
<laughs> no one behind him actually knows what he said. They just heard Whatever him. Whatever he says, they're just yeah! screaming. They're screaming. He's like, we all need to read more to gain knowledge. Yeah! 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 <laughs> yeah! <laughs> knowledge is awesome. I'm going to church. I'm going to church. That went viral. It became a thing. Yeah. And then after the Arizona State game, because some of his teammates said, obviously heard about that. They're yeah. like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to church tomorrow. Going to church. Going to church tomorrow. Mm-hmm. That's how I'm going to celebrate. Take me to church. Man, Jerem. <laughs> BYU beats Utah. And for us, that was a, a notable moment because in the history of this show, which started in 2013, 2013. Yep. we had never reported – on BYU TV as host of BYU Sports Nation that BYU football had beaten Utah in a football game. We actually didn't even know what to do. Like, our graphics team was like, can we say BYU won? Like, we don't even know. Like, how do we do this? Um, No, it was amazing. It really was. Like, it was so fun. And hopefully, you know, uh, in in three more years, we can do it again. Because these next two years, Utah wanted to play Florida instead of BYU. So no game. That's okay. BYU wanted to play. We shall sit. On the victory. You only wanted to play Arkansas and Oregon anyway. <laughs> Arkansas? <laughs> An SEC opponent, right? Utah went and got Florida, who is not as good as Arkansas Florida's, right now, amazingly. BYU is a way better game than Florida right now. How about that? Yeah. Let's go. So to recap. Number five, BYU Women's Soccer advances to the National Championship in the College Cup for the first time ever. Number four, Saturday, November 20th, which really launched No Loss November. At number three, Zach Wilson drafted number two overall into the National Football League. At number two, as we just talked about, BYU beats Utah in football. And the top moment of 2021 is BYU gets invited to the Big 12. I'm delighted to welcome Brigham Young University into the Big 12. That's so friggin' hot, yeah, boys! I just could not be any more excited today. BYU will be in the mix uh, with all the sports in which they compete. We will be a force to be reckoned with. Fans and players and coaches are the ones that got us here. We are thrilled to join the Big 12. The journey will still continue. <laughs> I have no words! Awesome. So awesome. Just to me, the most validating moment in BYU history. I didn't say sports. I said BYU because now BYU belongs. I'd like to personally take this moment to thank Texas and Oklahoma for leaving the Big 12 and going to the SEC because without it, BYU doesn't go. BYU, date, uh, you know, dated in 2016, did not have to go on a single date, if you will, in this time. The Big 12 just knew. They were like, okay, it's BYU and who else? And they went and got the four teams. I really like the league. I think it's going to be awesome. I think it's better than the Pac-12 in, in many ways, you know, uh, which will be fun. It's better than the ACC probably in football. Um, so it's, it's going to be really fun in 2023 when we get this going. Yes, thank you, Texas, for once again allowing BYU <laughs> to leapfrog you in a way into the Big 12. Not financially, but As yes. Taysom jumped over you in 2014. The Cougars are now jumping their way into – a Power Five conference. And, and, and for good months. measure, let's show the hurdle. <laughs> Wee! That Power Five invitation feels great. Oh, yeah. And and TJ Haas, buzzer beater, amazing. It's future Big 12 fall okay, let's, Houston. Let's here's a, here's yeah. the Mason Wake okay. shovel pass from Zach Wilson. Chiefs, women's hoops. Tegan Graham, we mentioned she hit 10 threes against Oklahoma. There's one of them. Jaren Hall, a, a long run against Baylor. We don't have to talk about the rest of the game. All good. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, Big 12 champs, Baylor, congrats, you know. But Jer- Jer- just, it just fit. Yes. Like, BYU just fits. Like, BYU's been a Power 5 type team type program for a long time. And it was just nice to just finally get in, dude. So, this, Still this nice. was. It resonates forever. I know. And we sit in this long engagement period. This is unorthodox for, you know, what we're used to around here in terms of length of time. But it, it's going to be a fun build up to actually play in the league. Mark Pope <laughs> is, as you just saw, very energized about the idea of BYU going to the Big 12. About anything? And life in general. That is for sure. You give him a bowl of popcorn, he'd be like, yeah! This is the best! Woo! This bowl of popcorn was popped at a high level! That's not to say the Big 12 basketball conference, we're talking primarily football, oh the God. basketball side of things certainly has his attention. The opportunity to have some of these teams roll through the Marriott Center and be in the best top to bottom best conference, basketball conference in the, in the country, it's overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> I have no words. <laughs> I, 
so on the on the show before you know we we between segments, I said, listen, if you go five hundred in league, he goes, I'm not going five hundred in league. We're not going five hundred in league. But I was like, I understand. If you did, you could still be like an eight or nine seed. Honestly, it's like the league is that good. So Colin Chandler, he signed up for the Big Twelve. You know, um, it's going to be awesome after his mission. Kansas, Oklahoma State, Baylor are going to come to the Marriott Center every season. How about that? Hopefully they do that because there will be, you know, 12, 24. You may not. But almost every year. Yeah, I, I love that. So uh, yeah. Bob Bowlesby, Our the guy. commissioner of the Big 12, there was a time where, we, you know, we had some hard feelings after 2016, but we've definitely come around for sure. Sure. Um, he complimented BYU while also taking a shot at uh, Texas and Oklahoma, it would seem. Speaking purely on a personal level, I enjoy working with people that I trust and that I like and that I know share the values that I have for intercollegiate athletics. And uh, in a very short period of time, I've come to know that that's what your university stands for. And so I, I just could not be any more excited today as we embark upon this new marriage. I, too, enjoy people that I like and trust, especially in a working environment, Jerem. Yeah, no, I'm not uh, you know, going to speak for uh, Bob there, but, yeah, that was totally about <laughs> Texas and Oklahoma, in my opinion. Yeah, right? It seemed like it. But, yeah, listen, BYU needed an opportunity. BYU was ready for that opportunity. Not just back in 2016. Back in the 80s, 90s, 2000s. Like, the people in the 70s helped build this, right? Virgil Carter helped to build this by winning a whack title initially. Like, all of these stepping stones led to this moment where – BYU could be invited to the Big 12. It's so awesome, dude. And we said this in the moment and in several shows after the Big 12 invitation happened, but let's go ahead and remind everyone that while 2016 was terribly frustrating and it felt like a dog and pony show to get more money for the Big 12 and nothing yep. else, yep. it was instrumental in placing BYU at the forefront when the call really did come because they had done so much research on BYU already that the Cougars and the athletic program here were the first call. So you know, BYU did not have to do a single thing no. to audition again. No, it was done. It was done it in was 2016. Done. They said, we know we want you. Who else are we getting? Which was pretty cool. And I think uh, Coach Pope wraps up uh, yep. our number one moment of 2021 well with this. Can we just say some non-word right now? Woo! <laughs> Can't say it better than that. That's 2021. That's going to be, you know, <laughs> later tonight at midnight. We're going to do that same thing. So, yeah, coming up, we look at the top viral moments in 2021. And Uncle B, Blaine Fowler, our dual threat analyst, joins us to break down the top five. <laughs> you look fantastic, Blaine. He looks amazing. Better than we do in those hats, that's for sure. <laughs> this is BYU Sports Nation. Stuff with some more after this. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! 
So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. <laughs> With a free BYU TV app. I like it. 2021 was arguably the best year to be a Coug. And on the latest BYU Sin right now, there's some proof of that. Check it out today on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Happy New Year's Eve, everyone. He is Jerem. I am Spencer. This is BYU Sports Nation. These are so ridiculous. To interact with the show and get more content <laughs> like this throughout your day, follow us on all of the social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. It's as nice as this is, I'm going to just set it right okay. here. Okay. Okay. Well, you might want to put it back on because the man we're welcoming in is rocking the blue goggles. Oh, yeah. And a 2022 Happy New Year hat. Blaine Fowler is with us to celebrate the top moments of 2021. This is looking back and looking forward. I got the, <laughs> I got the, every I got the blue goggles yeah. on, and your hat actually fits your head. I don't Like, am I, like, yeah. big head Todd, yeah, or what's mine, going mine on with you, Blaine? Like, mine is <laughs> not this thing, won't go, this thing won't go down over my big noggin. To Let's raise a glass of sparkling cider. To 2021. Yes. What a year, man. Incredible year. Oh, man, yeah. Cheers to 2021, BYU Sports. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's not cider. No, just kidding. Oh, boy. Jim, <laughs> don't, don't joke like that. It's pretty good, right? That's good stuff. It's pretty good. It is good. Okay, yeah. hat's coming off. Glasses yeah. are coming off for now. Oh, hair preserved. Wait. Very nice. His hair. This is. This is big nervous? time. This is big time. I'm nervous. Lane. Oh, oh, it's perfect. Of course it's it is. Perfect. Yeah, perfect hair. I figured. Of I course figured. it is. Come I, on, everyone man. always says that I'm safe if an anvil fell off of a building <laughs> and it fell on my head. It'd be okay. It would just go boing right off yeah. of my hair. Yeah, exactly. Everything would be fine. It might hurt my neck a little, but the head's yeah. fine. Uh, the I head love it. Fine. I love it. You are the perfect guest for this show. Uh, let's celebrate the top five moments that we just rolled out. What do you think of the list? Let's run through it really quick. Once again, BYU women's soccer advancing to the national title at number five. Saturday, November 20th. The whole day was incredible at number four. Zach Wilson drafted number two at number three. BYU ends the streak against Utah as number two. And Blaine, number one, of course, is the invitation to the Power Five ball from the Big 12. I, I think it's an incredible list. And there's so many things that come off of that list, right? And so, so I think... Part of, part of the Big 12 deal is, is all of a sudden recruiting season for football and basketball and you big name recruits that they, they land in both sports because of that Big 12 announcement. You know, we, we look at extensions of contracts. Mark Pope got an extension. Kalani Sataki's extension comes uh, partly because of the Big 12 announcement and all of that. I mean, it, it, it all ties together. But what an unbelievable unbel year for BYU sports as a whole. I mean, I did... This, the visibility of, of the soccer program, our women's soccer program. I had friends calling me from New York about the women's soccer program. And of course. Like, Man, I didn't realize they were that good. They're right in the spotlight. This is amazing. And and uh, so so every one of these are, are worthy top five picks. I can't think of any I would substitute in there, but I can think of many things that happen during the year that, that are tied to these five things. Yeah. What are some of those things? Well, I people don't realize – how big this Big 12 announcement is to recruiting. And I don't think that BYU gets uh, Chandler. Colin with, Chandler. Uh, Colin Chandler yeah. with the basketball team if they're not playing in the Big 12. 100%. Or, or Kingsley Suma. Or there, yeah. Kingsley. Yeah. Like, so let's just, th just talk about those two. And there's many others. But those two are big, big-time recruits. Kingsley, a, a top you know, a five-star type of a guy, a guy that will likely come in and start at tackle uh, for BYU next year, NFL prospect. Um, I don't know that that happens without that Big 12 announcement. That's a big deal. And and as I look forward to next year, I mean, this is going to pay off big time. BYU played a lot of young guys on that offensive line. You add him to what they have coming back next year, and – BYU's going to be really good. They're in great shape up front, but I don't think that I don't think Kingsley comes without that. Colin Chandler uh, is arguably the the best recruit BYU's ever signed. Now I don't know. We always look back and go, "Is he better than Danny Ainge?" Well, the, I don't know if it's anybody's always, it, ever going to be better than Danny Ainge. No one will be right? better than one Danny. Was. Right, yeah. but. But in terms of the visibility of him as a recruit and who was coming after him at the time yeah. and the situation where he grew up a Utah guy, right, w without the Big 12 announcement and probably without Mark Pope getting an extension where he's like, hey, you go on your mission, you come back, I'm going to be here to coach you. I don't think that they get Colin Chandler. And so so I think that 
And then I, when I just look at the recruiting classes um, in all sports uh, that have been solidified during during this year, 2021, I think a lot of that ties back to this Big 12 announcement. So that's an unbelievably worthy number one mm. in my mind because so many things tie to that. I think it's the biggest announcement in the history of the university, not just athletics. I, I think it changes the dynamic of BYU forever as a school, as an athletic department. And you talk about recruiting, feels like this ties in to the fact that um, BYU always overachieves in its sports. Women's soccer is not getting top 10 recruiting classes. They're getting top, I don't even know if they rank them. Volleyball is, um, but the other sports, they're overachieving constantly because you're getting a certain type of kid that has a certain work ethic, excellent coaching, really good facilities. And then it felt like, Blaine, there was this like Big 12 momentum, like this engagement to be married boosted BYU in this amazing way where we knew all the other sports were awesome, but they took it to another level with the cross-country national championships, women winning in the spring, second in the fall, soccer, volleyball, uh, baseball and softball continued to excel. There was sort of a momentum of that announcement for all the sports too. Yeah, and then, and that's where that's where the Saturday, November 20th comes into play, right? Because yeah. there's so much – I feel like that is when we all started to go, wait a minute. No lose November. You like, has not like lost what's up. going on after that. This guy brings it up and becomes this national thing because that crazy. was such yeah. an incredible day in BYU sports, where it's just like every the cross country champs, like all these things that happen that, that you guys have outlined on September twentieth, and then you think, yeah, then we started to talk about that. Put in your mind, no lose November. Has that happened before? Like what in the world is going on? And all over the country, because that starts to get promoted, word gets out. Hey, BYU hasn't lost their entire athletic program. Hasn't lost in the month of November? It still When's took, that ever happened anywhere? Uh, and it's still hard to know. But, like, that next Saturday, we're now watching it. We're like, is BYU going to do it? Yeah. And so it was fun to watch <laughs> the next Saturday BYU men's basketball go on the road and beat Utah. And then BYU football won at USC. And BYU women's basketball won a big game as and well. Women's soccer had to win at home? Yes. To get in the Elite Eight? You know what Wild. I mean? Like, so to close yeah. out, so yeah, volleyball. The twenty that last November. that the, that la- after that, we we're all looking at it, going, okay, that was not that's an unbelievable day. But the challenges in front of multiple teams in this next ten days, yeah, I don't know, if, I don't know if they can finish. Let's talk about no no lose November. But is that a reality? Is that really when the month closes? Is that going to be real? It was real. And then we don't have to talk about how December went. In a no, we're going to we're going to talk about <laughs> December is how many people can we get hurt December? That's what December is. <laughs> how many guys can sit out hurt in December? It was the cost of having the yeah, last but, November. Yeah, but between and I know that some of these injuries happen, but I look at the basketball team in December and having uh. to play without Gavin Baxter and having the flu run through the team and Richie Harward not coming back and the football team goes in into their bowl game just so shorthand. I don't know that we've ever had a more shorthanded football team in a bowl game in the history of BYU. Um, seven regulars, you could call them starters because they were either starters or the primary rotating in guy on defense and five on offense out for that game. We haven't talked about it that much, but but it, it's really hard to win in, in those circumstances. And people are like, well, they beat USC. Well, they lost like four more guys in the USC game. Uh, you know, critical guys. And so December is going to go down is how many people can we get injured December? Um, or <laughs> like play, how many people can we play without December? But uh, b- back to your point, Spencer, this uh, or was it was you, Jeremy, that said they've been able to develop athletes because they always haven't had the top recruiting classes. We get this Big 12 announcement, yep. and and now all of a sudden the, the recruiting has taken a step up in all sports and it's going to continue. It's so key that you keep the coaches. We talk about Jen Rockwood, regardless of what the sport is, at developing talent, BYU as a program, to finish where they do every year in the Director's Cup is remarkable because they don't recruit at the top. That's what I'm saying. We can quantify the overachievement. Right. And so with that, now it's important you lock those coaches down because – we know that they can develop talent, right? And so now if the talent improves and they continue to be able to make those really highly rated players better and the ones that they bring in at the bottom of the class that they bring up to the level and develop them the way they have, the sky's the limit for what this athletic program can do. They've already proven they can compete on a national level across the board in all sports with anybody. And now the, the cachet of the Big 12 on their moniker is they go in and recruit. So a higher level talent with a coaching staff in all of these sports that does such a phenomenal job. I and mean, I don't care what you're talking about, whether it's women's basketball or women's soccer or 
or cross country or track and field, men's, women's, um, football, basketball. BYU really overachieves in every sport based on on the talent that they get. And so so now I expect that to just take off. And that, that's why it was really important to lock Mark Pope down for the long term. It was important to, to lock down Kalani Sataki for hey, the long term. That happened in December. So something good did that's happen true. in December. Kalani that's Sataki true. got locked down. And, and not, just, not just Kalani and Mark – but like with this Kalani Satake deal, lock down um, a commitment to the staff from this university that says we're serious about football. Um, this is not going to be a pass-through place. This is a destination place. So they can keep coaches longer. Um, the, the ones that do come through aren't just going to come through and go take any job. If they take a job, it's going to be a big-time job that they go take. And, and so you're going to have more consistency of development and all of that across the board, football, bat, you name it. And so I think all of you know, that no, no win November was awesome. But, but the no big 12, November. I mean, no, no loss. And it's not no win December. <laughs> <laughs> they want some good games yeah, already. Yeah, in yeah, sure. in it's just well. not quite what November sure. was, right? <laughs> so, so I'm glad you corrected me on that. But it's a lot of these things are tied into one another. Yeah. Um, and it, it really has been a remarkable year. Yeah, I just can't get over the 48-hour period that included the invitation officially to the Big 12 BYU beats Utah to end the streak the next day. And then the number two overall pick, Zach Wilson, makes his first NFL start on that Sunday. That Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the energy was unbelievable across BYU athletics. Yeah, that was crazy. And and don't think that beating that having Zach Wilson get taken number two in the draft and beating Utah doesn't also contribute to BYU's ability to recruit. Absolutely. Right. So they go, Whoa, if I'm if I'm a quarterback, I can be an elite, elite company. Well, you don't use that word very often, right? No. Elite company. Double elite. Um, and get from BYU, double elite. Oh, hey, my if gosh. you're the number two pick in the draft, that's double elite, <laughs> right? And if they had a guy that could block on that team at the New York Jets. Yes. The know, only issue is I, like, it's the Jets. When I watch him right now, I look at his arm talent still, and I go, okay, he's his arm talent is off the charts. If And they have a couple of really, really high draft picks this this next year. They will for the next Take a tackle years. and a guard for Pete's sakes. <laughs> they will. For and the protect our poor guy out there because he's got the talent to be a great player in that league. But having a guy like that come through the program – um, and get drafted second helps. And then beating Utah sends a message that there, there's no talent gap anymore. Um, and, you know, BYU's been unfortunate that the, the season's tailed off because, and I attribute it mostly to all, all the injuries, but they went com- pretty depleted and beat USC on the road. That That's a testament to depth, right? It was probably just too much to overcome in that UAB game. But I've, I've had people come up to me and go, Utah would beat BYU now with their new quarterback. And I go, Probably because BYU's missing like nine guys. But BYU healthy like they were at the beginning of the year? Yeah, their new quarterback didn't get his butt run all over defensively. BYU manhandled Utah in that game. <laughs> all, all over the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. And BYU was healthy, right? I'll raise and the so, glass to that. So, so he, he, made a, made a, he may have made a little bit of a difference because they're playing a lot better now and they've got a lot more chemistry with him. But the bottom line is when, when BYU lined up 100% healthy, they matched up with everybody in the country. And physically, they matched up with Utah. So I wouldn't be so quick to go, well, if we had a different quarterback – well, well, if we had our nine guys back, if we had our nine guys back, we would have beat the heck out of UAB, and we'll go back and play you with our nine guys back. Okay, yes. amen to that. So, so I'm not, I'm not buying into that. That win over Utah. I'm drinking Utah, all of this. Yeah, <laughs> that win over Utah was straight up not a fluke. BYU's talent level is caught up. BYU is as physical as Utah when healthy, right? And people go, well, they, they, they need to be deeper. Utah's not that. Utah can't lose nine guys either. Yeah. Alabama is maybe the only team I know of that can lose nine guys and still be good, right? <laughs> yes. So. Blaine, I'm so happy that we had you on this show. I wish you'd thank really you tell, you told for, us what you're doing. Thank you for hanging out One with day us. I'll tell yeah. you guys how I feel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell me how you happy, really feel. Happy New exactly. Year. A great happy look New back. Year. This is the guy you wanted every New Year's Eve party right here, Blaine. Exactly. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thanks, Blaine. Okay, coming up, an end of year rise and shine. And the top viral moments of 2021 as we wear our 2022 glasses. This is BYU Sports Nation.
those who leave the most meaningful legacy seem to be the ones who never intended to. The same person who loses himself seems to be the same that finds himself. And why? Well, they give the best of who they really are with no thought of return. Find a cause you can put your heart into, my son, in which to lose yourself. I started the Deseret Donor Advised Fund for this reason. Because in the end, my greatest legacy is you. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Every day, I help an animal walk again. I believe that having special needs animals has brought an extra layer of richness to the fabric of our family. Not many people take in these special needs guys, but in the end, they're the best ones. It's unbelievable. It's like his disability has disappeared. Every step just proves to me that these dogs can get through anything. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store. Official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Listen to some of the greatest stories in Cougar sports on the Deep Blue Podcast as they talk to current and former players and coaches. Find it on the BYU Radio app or where podcasts are found, including our latest one with Derwin Gray. Welcome back to the top five moments of 2021 BYU Sports Nation special. <laughs> oh, my Ooh. gosh. That Live is from dead Studio B. Duck. Oh my gosh. That was the Oregon Here Ducks. Here come the animals. <laughs> that's hopefully that's what Oregon sounds like September 17th next Right? Week. All right, we gave you a look at our top 5 moments in detail, but in the social media world it's clearly all about taking things viral and getting noticed by everyone across the world. BYU went viral multiple times. Let's take a look beginning with this, Jerem. The Pac-12 championship banner is unfurled. I believe we have something to do right now. Yeah, yes. In Studio B. Speaking of unfurling, how strange this random rope is here, Jerem. It's not random. Unfurl it, baby. What happens if I pull on this rope? Okay, yeah. Okay! Yeah. Listen, Kalani Sitake took the high road. <laughs> we do not, okay? Pac-12 champs. And the messaging is very, very clear here, right? <laughs> of the white versus the outline. This is awesome. How long are we keeping that up? So I, uh, I, I tweeted this, and uh, there were a lot of youths in the, in the mentions, which was really weird. <laughs> you know? Is it? Super uncommon. Because <laughs> no BYU fans jump in any Utah conversations either. Hey, wow. BYU didn't beat Oregon hey, twice. Come on, man. You didn't even beat UIB, bro. They're the Pac-12 champs, man. <sighs> Shut up, Daryl. <laughs> Utah fan. We man. said we'd keep it up at least through the new year. And here we are on New Year's Eve. Yeah. Into we'll 22. See, we'll yeah, see what go. happens yeah, into yeah, 2022. Exactly. Until BYU is not the de facto Pac-12 South champ, <laughs> we should probably keep it up. <laughs> the next football season? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Until the BYU-Oregon game. Oh, so good. All right, we'll rewind to the spring. BYU men's basketball in the NCAA tournament bubble in Indianapolis. And Jesse Wade had an eventful experience Getting stuck in the elevator. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Come on, it's yes, no! yes, yes, no! Here you go, ask But you gotta go. go. Oh! <laughs> oh my gosh. Just glad Jesse's safe and okay. That expression of him when the door pops open and makes that loud banging noise. It's like, oh, is everything okay? Man, what a team effort just to get their teammate out of Well, the and elevator. look at the reaction. Seth Davis. Jim Rome. Jim Rome. These guys are incredible. Stool. Yeah. Unfortunately, that was the high moment of the that NCAA tournament as UCLA went on to go to the final four and got buzzer beat by Gonzaga. But like that was crazy, and honestly, if I'm Jesse, I'm not sure I'm walking out of that thing. I'm afraid that elevator's coming down, oh, and I am wow. a goner. Like, that freaked me out. As ESPN's main account tweeted, 
his boys came to the rescue. Yes, they did. Okay. The play of the year, as, as we've highlighted on the top plays uh, list in December here, Tyler Algier punching the ball loose against Arizona State after the interception from Jaron Hall is one of the greatest plays we've ever seen. You and I uh, helped produce the top 100 plays show we did last year. I don't know where this fits. I haven't top thought 20. That. It's, it might be top 10, bro. Like, it is unbelievable that Tyler tracks this down. The former linebacker pulls the left shoulder of Merlin Robertson, who cannot cast any spells at this point, and Tyler Algier punches that ball out. It is an incredible play. I was watching closely because it happened right in front of me. I was standing right there. As you look at some of the commentary Draymond coming Green, across social bro. media, to see the looks of just elation from the Arizona State side and then immediate deflation as soon as he punches that ball out <laughs> and Jaron Hall recovers it. Just highest of high to the, oh, no, in a matter of seconds. And isn't it unbelievable that in the greatest rushing season by any player in BYU history, that the greatest play by said player isn't a rush? Linebacker Tyler Algier. Crazy, right? Unbelievable. Tyler went linebacker. Mode. Unbelievable. Talked about Zach Wilson and him being drafted number two overall. That was our number three overall moment in 2021. And a huge part of that was the pro day throw that everybody in the NFL community had to say a thing or two about. Rolling to his left, fading. When it happened, I just said to you, because we were live, oh, that is an unbelievably difficult throw that he just made look super easy. No one talked about this part of it. Are you ready? Aleva Hifo had to catch that ball. Aleva Hifo had to catch that ball. Otherwise, it's like, what just happened? But, yes, Zach, incredible throw. Trevor Lawrence, sheesh. Johnny Manziel in between sips. This is crazy talent right here of Martinelli's. That's the throw of the pro day season right now. NFL. It was crazy, right? Broadway, Zach. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was – the reaction was amazing. That cinched – Zach to New York. So did you want Aleva Hifo to drop that ball then? Yes. I wish Aleva would have dropped it. <laughs> then Zach wouldn't be in the hole that is the Jets. We have seen a lot of <laughs> major changes across the landscape of collegiate sports, but maybe nothing larger than the NCAA allowing name, image, and likeness to become a thing so that players can be paid for their services. And BYU did not wait long. Nope. Within the legislation of the state of Utah, they have some movement there. And in comes Built Bar and their owner, Nick Greer, Nick Greer yeah, let's go. to reward not just any players at BYU, but the walk-on players specifically at BYU, essentially giving them scholarship money so that they can pay for their books and their schooling. And just This was an emotional day for a lot of these guys and easily the number one social media moment that we witnessed in 2021. Yeah, tuition equivalent level of, of money if they work for Built Bar, essentially, right? So amazing, amazing moments this year from BYU uh, on the field, but like we talked about, off it as well. Pretty cool. And people keep saying, hey, it's pay for play. No, they're paid for their services on social media and to do these things. They they give a service. It's pay to promote. Exactly. Yeah. For what they do. Still waiting for our NIL deals. Coming up, a final (laughs) elite voice of the day for 2020. Why are Texas and Oklahoma involved in this show at all? Huh. Uh, The real MVPs here. We'll discuss that next. This is BYU Sports Nation. Introducing the all-new 2021 Nissan Rogue. A fuel-efficient car that's compact enough to park just about anywhere but has enough cargo space to fit your hobbies, your kids' hobbies, and your dog's hobbies. It's equipped with the latest safety and efficiency technology for a smooth and quiet ride wherever you want to go, whether it's through the neighborhood or across the country. Are you ready to rogue? It's at Tim Daly Nissan Southtown. And BYU made such a difference in our lives. I think really helped mold us as to, as to who we are. And so when we had that opportunity and, and came back to Boise and found out there was an active chapter, we thought, okay, that's something that I can really get behind and get involved in. We want to promote the BYU experience all over the, the, the region. We want people who leave BYU to still stay connected. I watch uh, BYU TV because it has good programming uh, for all family members, aligns to my values. 
BYU TV really does help me with my parenting. It helps me show my kids good examples of the way that we should live. No matter what you watch or listen, you always live uh, feeling better. All of us together. I'm fully supportive of your father's decision. This family needs time out. We set peace and quiet. You don't get quieter than this. Oh. You mean it's haunted? I shall become their living nightmare. We aren't Ghostbusters. I have a plan. It's nice to meet you. I am cussed. This place is starting to feel like home. How do you plead? For mercy. For love is always with you. And love is stronger than death. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Station, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. Or download the pod. Uh, you can Google BYU Sports Station podcast, subscribe, rate, and review the program. Our top five moments of 2021. What a fun show this has been to put together. I know, it just keeps getting filled up each segment. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> Martinelli's for the win. It has not disappointed <laughs> in that regard either. <laughs> Let's recap the top five moments. At number five, BYU women's soccer advancing to the national championship for the first time in program history. What an accomplishment for head coach Jen Rockwood, led by her stars, Cassett included, the top drawer soccer player of the year, Michaela Coulihan, Cameron Tucker, an incredible performance. I mean, just the whole team, number one scoring offense in the country. Number four, Saturday, November 20th, the start of no loss November, at least in our minds. Number three, Zach Wilson drafted at number two overall in April. Number two, BYU football beats Utah for the first time since 2009 and end the nine-game losing streak to their longtime and heated rivals. And number one, BYU invited to join the Big 12 Conference in all sports competition beginning in 2023. Pretty cool, man. 2021 was one of the greatest years, if not the greatest year in BYU sports history. I mean, it was unbelievable. I almost hate to see it go. <laughs> <laughs> Only a few more hours. <laughs> Today's rise and shout outs presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. First off, Texas and Oklahoma for bouncing to the SEC. So the Big 12 had a need for somebody, and that somebody was at least BYU, which is pretty special. Yes. Uh, the Sooners and Longhorns, they've been good to BYU football in head-to-head competition yes, as they well. Have. Yes, they Six have. and one. Go Cougs. The streaks ending. Notably, BYU football, of course, beating Utah and ending that one and just dominating in all sports against their heated yes. rival. Uh, Tyler Algier, what a year he had. Connor Mance, Whitney Orton winning the Natties. Women's volleyball continuing to do what it did. Cross-country teams, women's soccer. It was such a fun yes. year. Yes, yeah. Men's the- volleyball went to the national championship again. That was awesome. We're spoiled. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We are spoiled. Our thanks to today's guest, Blaine Fowler. Sorry to Dennis Pitta. I hope you go to bed at 9 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year, Dennis. For Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. Shout out to Dennis Simmons. He's got some Oklahoma ties. We'll see you next year. Go Coos. Dennis, I like. <laughs>